The 170mm Specialized Enduro 29er is designed for racing enduro in every way. So are the trails at the Lots Wheel Bike Park, so I figured it was the best place to go test the bike. The majority of the trails in Lots Wheel were built for races specifically, and this trail in the video here is called Cambodia, also known as J Trail. And the trail gets really steep and fairly rough toward the bottom. Unfortunately, a lot of that footage was unwatchable. So we'll go with this uh, nice open stuff from the top. This particular 2020 Enduro build comes with a Fox DPX2 air shock. I think if I was gonna race this bike regularly on longer tracks like these ones in La Tuile, I might wanna have a coil shock to swap out and just test the times and see which one was faster. It definitely heated up and got a little stiff toward the end of the long run. But outside of a race, it's not anything to be concerned with. I mean, the bike handled fantastically. The suspension felt really well balanced with the Fox 36, 170 millimeters up front as well. And generally the rest of the build kit on this bike is really nice. It's got an XO, and GX mixed drivetrain that's plenty tough enough for racing and keeps the bike light and overall the bike has a really nice light feel surprisingly so for how large it is. <clears throat> the carbon wheels certainly lend a hand to that sensation and they're a little less stiff, a little less nervous feeling than some similarly deep sectioned um, kind of big burly carbon rims like these. They really felt nice, tracked well, and didn't make the bike feel jittery when you got in a, a lot of kind of rounded or slicker rocks. The rear butcher grid trail tire didn't quite make it through the test. Uh, I ended up swapping in a Schwalbe Magic Mary, but I really liked the way the front tire gripped. It felt super good in turns. It felt really good on loose, messy trail. I, I would love to try a set of these in the DH case sometime. Finally, the SRAM Code RSC brakes this bike came with work really well, better than the brakes that have been coming on a lot of other review bikes. I was impressed with them, they had plenty of power, um, yeah, they just, just felt good all the time and never needed to be bled, and yeah, in general, worked great, worked exactly how you want powerful gravity brakes to work. The Enduro sits in a race bike category alongside the Sam Cruz Mega Tower, the Scott Ransom, and several other really long travel, super capable bikes. The difference that I noticed between this bike and some other bikes in this category is that it's really comfortable to ride, it's easy to get along with, it will save your mistakes, it's got plenty of travel, super slack, head tube, and everything we all need to save us from our mistakes. And <laughs> to save me from mine, while at the same time it's got a nice steep seat tube angle, it feels comfortable to climb on, It again it feels really light for its size and for its capability, and all jokes aside it really does feel like you're pedaling pretty comfortably a downhill bike. 
which is fantastic. I mean, because there's cool tracks that you might want to ride a downhill bike on that there's no lift to, and there's no way to drive a van to, and you, know, you don't have an e-bike, so you take this, and you're set. I mean, this bike, it's surprising how much it feels like a do-everything bike with 170 millimeters of travel. I mean, you can truly do everything apart from racing across country. And with the swap box that you can store first aid and all kinds of food, maybe even a jacket in, uh, tubes, whatever you want. I mean, you can essentially use the majority of the down tube and just pack it full of all your, your goods. Um, you've got plenty of space to bring and remember everything you need. So for folks who are able to take lunch laps and don't want to hop on the bike and forget a tube, you can just leave a tube in your bike all the time and never worry about it. And lastly, I want to emphasize what might seem obvious that this bike really deserves its place among those top-level long-travel race bikes. It makes all of those super steep, super scary cheese grater sections easier and it just floats over everything. There's so much travel and so much room to save you from your errors that it really does give the confidence of a downhill bike. And sure, there's some differences uh, in terms of fork stiffness and a little bit of a travel difference, but if you're not like <clears throat> trying to huck bus size gaps, this thing feels a whole lot like a downhill bike and it's certainly all the downhill bike I could ever need. For more info on the Specialized Enduro, check out the full review on singletracks.com, where you can also find loads of cool stories and product reviews. Thanks for listening, and if you have any questions, make sure to put them in the comments here or under the article on Singletracks. Thanks.